This is like my fourth attempt to do, to you know to do this right. Hope you can do this right and you know actually have me in focus this whole time. So I am going to be talking about Dracula, uh, the book. You know I'll give a little bit of a summary, not a huge thing, and then I'll talk about in the analysis. You know which is like the analysis will be the heavier focus part of the video. So let's begin. Okay, so first of all, you ha you must know this. This is basically essential. Dracula was written by a guy named Bram Stoker. What makes Bram Stoker so interesting is the fact that he was a Irish immigrant. We'll talk about that later. Now, before I start off talking about the summary, I'm going to say this. Uh, the book was published in 1897. So keep in mind is that there is a different writing style. Uh, there's different vocabulary that's used that you might not be keen to see before. Not only that, the whole book, if not every single piece of it, is written in diary entries and journal entries and all that jazz. In fact, I don't think there's a single part where it isn't. I don't think so. Well, so there's, those are two things to keep in mind when you're reading them. Also keep in mind a lot of people, because unless you're not Mr. Elson, Mr. Elson, and you're, you know, just some, you know, psychopath, at like 3 a.m. watching some 17-year-old uh, ginger with a, you know, scraggly, horrible beard. It's not even a beard, it's a piece of... Basically, if, if, you, if you're not watching this, I will say this. If you're not watching it for my assignment that I'm doing right now, keep in mind that a lot of people think, oh, you know, Dracula, Frankenstein, they must be identical. And even I had that mindset going into it. Because, you know, they're both monster books. Um, keep in mind... Frankenstein is also from a different time period and has a different vocabulary used compared to Dracula, but also Dracula is much more horror based, and you'll notice that basically instantly. While Frankenstein is completely science fiction, um, in fact, it's if I remember correctly, that is the first ever science fiction. For, if I if I remember correctly, Frankenstein is the first ever science like modern day science fiction novel but that doesn't that doesn't matter we're talking about dracula <laughs> frankenstein what a loser so the thing about dracula is that although bram Stoker may not have created he definitely with the book of dracula really established that gothic victorian era style of writing and atmosphere and tone and stuff like that and you know it's debatable of when that really started but dracula was definitely the first cement hit of this time period in fact um I'm, because of this book i th i personally feel and and also many scholar scholars um believe that you know the reason why that time period is so recognizable and so famous so memorable is partly to, be, to partly to do because of this book so you know what's dracula even about well dracula um i'll keep it short i'll keep it simple um no spoilers um, well, maybe a little, but at the end of the day, Dracula is basically about a guy called Dracula, and essentially he's uh, trying to move to London, England, and of course, essentially that is the most watered down thing I could possibly give you. Of course, it's not just that. Um, there are many characters, like I mentioned before, like Jonathan Harker and Van Helsing, who get in the way of Dracula, now, of course, Dracula being, you know, the lovable, lovable vampire we know and love, he kills people and stuff like that, and he, you know, he has victims and stuff like that, and there's a, you know, there are a few parts, especially with Van Helsing, where it becomes a bit of a cat and mouse chase, um, to the part where, a point where, uh, about, you know, say three quarters, it, um, it becomes almost like a hunt down. Well, that's a bit of exaggeration, but as you can probably get the idea, you know where this is heading. Uh, there's not many twists and turns in this book. There aren't many, like, you know, like, oh, God, I didn't see that coming. It's like, <laughs> you, you know, like, hey, oh, right? There's nothing like that. It's pretty straight. It's pretty straightforward. But for what it is, it is good. Um, so that is, you know, a very short, very, you know, little summary of it. Uh, and cause, like, let's be real, you know, reviews and like summaries shouldn't really be coexisted to be honest i mean let's be real you want the review so here's the review of you know <laughs> the book so basically my 
and the analysis. So basically, my analysis is is that remember when I said before that the author of the book Bram Stoker was a Irish immigrant. This is a gigantic um, piece of evidence that kind of makes you shift perspective on the book. Um, the second I found that out, I kind of realized that the whole thing is been like a an allegory or a parallel of some sort, or maybe you could say it's a metaphor for Irish immigrants in general. And um, because if you think about it, well, oh, <laughs> never mind. Um, is again, so Dracula is essentially an immigrant, um, but you know, as uh, sorry, as we, I think virtually everybody knows, Irish immigrants have always had a very tough time immigrating. Um, they've always been patronized, hated upon, been discriminated against, all that jazz. It this is like basic, basic history. This is very essential stuff. So, the thing is, when you start thinking about it, you realize that the parallels between Dracula, the evil doer, and the foreigner, the evil man who comes over to what seems to be a relatively, you know, functioning society of London, he kind of destroys stuff, and uh, you could, and he's disrupting everything, and he's ruining the flow of everything because, you know, he's not even human. Um, and not only that, if you really look really deep into it, you can really think about the idea that when he, you know, when he's biting people's necks and all that jazz and he's taking the blood from them and he's like contaminating them into making them vi- them, them vampires, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of suggesting the idea that like when Irish immigrants come in and, you know, mate or whatever, where like, you know, they have families with natives of the area of London or wherever you are, they're tainting the bloodline, right? Um, again, uh, a little, little bit of a spoiler, but uh, there is one female character who does get turned into a vampire, and essentially she gets murdered for it because you know she's not even human anymore, and you know you can really say like oh like the idea of vampires ruining society is similar to how the British view Irish destroying society and um, again contaminate you know contaminating and tainting everything that is essentially good um, and I, 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 I wouldn't go far to say that this whole book is one big thing about racism and stuff like that it, it's there is of course that big element which you can definitely this this whole analysis you can definitely look at it and say there's definitely some sort of outline here that is being copied from real life onto the, you know, pages we think. But at the same time, I have to say, you know, it is a book. Uh, there's many themes in Dracula. Um, you know, immigrants aside, there's also horror and stuff like that. But that's the one analysis I really want to drive home because I feel like, I feel, I feel personally that context is a gigantic part of virtually anything that is story. in like, overall, whether it's a book, movie, play, yada, 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 and the, the idea is, if an author were to write a book and thinking of their background, like what is their metric they're trying to say, maybe this isn't the, like the only message in Dracula, but I personally feel like this is a lot of coincidences that shouldn't go unseen. Um, it is, re- like, it is very like, you can see the parallels. That's all I'm trying to say. So, besides his weird pseudo anti-immigrant look on things and besides the fact that it is a i can understand why it's a classic it's not the best book i ever read it's it's it's, for what it is it's good um you know uh you're not going to read it and obviously like you know start crying because of how beautiful it is and stuff like that but for what it's worth you can see why it's a classic especially when the time came out um, and the thing, how do I, how do I word this correctly? Um, it's a book that does stand out and especially considering, considering that it's the first of its kind, um, especially for the vampire. I mean, the modern day vampire did come from Dracula. Of course, you know, vampires have been around for hundreds of years, actually before Dracula, but this is 
again, like similar to the Victorian era, um, this really cemented that whole idea. And of course, as you can probably get the idea from the book, the tone, the tone is negative. Um, I, I, well, the thing about the tone is it's very drabby, I guess. Uh, it's not a positive book, nor would I say it's a happy book by any means, but it's, I wouldn't say it's a downright sad book. Um, again, horror and fear play a gigantic role. Yeah, I guess you could say fear is the tone and theme, um, accompanied with horror. And, of course, that's one way to look at it, again. But that's also if you consider the idea of, you know, my personal analysis going into it. And, you know, you can interpret it whatever way you want. Um, and at the end of the day, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh... Not only, yeah, 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 yeah.